Alrighty, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in on a Monday, no less. I'll be your host today. I'm Chris Lavoie. I'm the head of tech partnerships at Gorgeous, which is a customer support help desk built for e-commerce merchants. Really excited to be putting on this special event today, which is all about how to deliver us an exceptional customer service experience for your customers. Really thrilled to be joined today by experts from Simpler, Thankful, Klaus, LateShipment.com, and our first merchant um, uh, promo today is Tushy, which is a bidet company. So we're thrilled to have such a great panel with us. Uh, before I flip the floor over and kick things off, I just want to start with some uh, some basic notes about this webinar series and some of the, the housekeeping rules. And so first and foremost, we started this uh, webinar series a few months ago, really um, to educate our merchants on all the different um, categories and themes that we had uh, partners that had expertise in. And so we've done a number of events, as you can see, on return season, omni-channel e-commerce strategy, loyalty, customer retention, so how do you keep all those customers you acquired during the BFCM and holidays. And we did a one on mobile commerce best practices. And so again, these are designed for you, uh, merchants. And so we're always listening to you to see which topics and themes that you want to hear about. We got a lot of uh, feedback and requests for what does the future look like in e-commerce for customer service? because as we know, customers' expectations are going through the roof, and so that's why we've assembled the panel that we have uh, today. And in terms of what we're asking from you, really, we just want you to ask as many questions as you can. This is really built for you, so the more you ask, um, you're having direct face time with leading experts in the space who have great platforms and products, and so it's in your best interest to ask as much as you can. We are gonna post a lot of polls, um, a few different poll questions per speaker, and that's a great way for us to collect feedback from you to uh, better understand how we can um, you know, provide for you in the future. And then, yeah, any feedback that you have, definitely uh, please share that with us. We want to continuously refine this to make this even better for you. All right. Um, obviously, we're not going to be throwing any webinars without uh, you know, giving something away. So we do have a, a number of great giveaways. Usually, we only have about one thing that we give away. Um, but in this webinar, we have up to five different things. You can see some of the different ones that we're going to be giving away, a Yeti cooler, some AirPod Pros, um, some blue uh, Blu-ray glasses, a cocktail set, and then Tushy has been kind enough to be giving away a $250 gift card. They have some pretty exceptional branding, as you can see, on the gift card itself. And so we'll be giving those out iteratively. The key caveat for you is you actually have to be on air with us to be eligible, and we're going to randomly select one person from the audience. So. I'm um, really excited to be sharing that. All right, we're ready to kick things off. This is a 90-minute webinar. I might go just slightly over. We apologize for that. Uh, each speaker is going to get 15 minutes to present and talk about their product and platform and how it relates to the future of uh, customer service. And then we'll have a few minutes for, for Q&A. If they can't answer all of your questions, definitely uh, take advantage of posting questions in the, the chat, and they'll uh, definitely get back to you. And with that, I'm, I'm super thrilled to be introducing our first speaker, Daniel uh, from Simpler, and I'm going to disable my screen now, and I'll let you take over, Daniel. Awesome. Great. All right. thank, you. thank you so much, Chris, and thank you, everybody, for, for joining in here today. Um, and yeah, I am kind of jealous of how edgy Tushy gets to be with its branding. I, I, I really am. It's fantastic. Um, but um, as Chris kind of mentioned, you know, I think a lot of the reason that people are here is because they want to stay on the cutting edge of what's going on. Um, and one of the things that, that, that we wanted to talk to everybody about is the way that the customer expectation has fundamentally changed. So I want everyone to know that it's not your fault, first of all. Um, I believe that Amazon Prime is awesome. <laughs> Actually, you know, I feel like a couple years ago, I was very willing to be patiently waiting for a response from a company, you know, wait a day, you know, I could take, you know, take it or leave it if something came in, in two or three days after I'd ordered it, you know, now, especially then you add on Amazon Prime now, and within a couple hours of having a thought, I can go on my phone, order the thing, and it's actually delivered to my door and in my hands from the store, not even just take out food, right? Um, I think that this is, in some ways become too awesome. I think it's ruined the way that I personally behave as a human being. I'm now like Veruca Salt from Willy Wonka. I am a spoiled brat. I can't wait for anything anymore. Um, and this is part of the reason why, why when I say it's, it's maybe too awesome because 
this is now fundamental. I'm not alone in this, first of all. I'm, I'm, for those of you who might be nodding along while I'm saying this, you're like, yeah, I've kind of become a little bit like this over the past couple of years as well. And it's it's actually bearing out across a lot of different age demographics. It's not just a certain it's not just a certain generation of person right now that is behaving in this way. And this is ca causing a lot of challenges for e-commerce brands. The expectation that the customer has of fast and always reliable service. And when we're talking about fast, we mean really fast, like less than 30 seconds on chat. And by the way, chat has to be available all the time and that it's 24 seven, right? So people will bounce basically if, if you're not like this. So, you know, 89% of people, they expect this 51% of people, if, you know, if it's, if it's not good enough, they're going to leave your brand. They're gone. <laughs> You've spent all of this money trying to acquire that, that customer. And then you don't get back to them quickly enough with the question they have on your website, they leave. And a lot of the times that people are interacting with brands and we hear this, ch this challenge, particularly for e-commerce companies that have a retail presence, brick and mortar, right? So if you are e-commerce, but you are not exclusively e-commerce, you might be stuck in a little bit of a brick and mortar mindset, a brick and mortar mentality, meaning, hey, we staff to the needs of the customer based on when the sun is up outside, where, where the headquarters is. And that's not exactly how people are interacting with your brand. You know, 44% of shoppers are actually shopping in those evening hours between 6 and 6 p.m. and, and 9 a.m. So that's the night. That's the middle of the night sometimes. Um, and the, the now customer expects this availability. This is great. We got people all over the place from San Diego to London, Estonia. This is fantastic. Um, now, this exceptional service expectation is leaving missed revenue on the table. And it's an investment that's worth making. There is a $5.23 increase per customer in, in, in revenue when you actually get this right. And by this right, I mean you solve for this pain of customers are trying to basically interact with your brand and you're not there to interact with them. If you've got 100 million customers, and some of you have fewer than that, I know, but if you've got 100 million customers, this is a $523 million annual revenue problem that you're not capturing. We're just doing the math on $5.23 times 100 million customers. And some brands do have 100 million customers, and this truly is that big of, of, of a problem. I think intuitively, we also recognize what it's like to be on the flip side of when a brand is letting us down. I think that we can all kind of reminisce in the not too distant past about a time where a brand wasn't there for you. And you know, they were, they were slow, unhelpful. They were unavailable. It was inconvenient for you. They were unresponsive. This makes people feel ignored annoyed, neglected, frustrated, and unimportant. These emotions are what end up driving purchasing behavior much more so than any single like, hey, this is gonna be five cents cheaper for somebody, or I was able to, I was able to optimize something in, in some way on the website. It is about the emotional resonance that you have with your customers. And you and I have probably all had these moments. What do you do? <laughs> like, let's not abstract this. Like when that situation happened, what did you do? You left, the, you, you left, you, you just went to a different tab and, and went to a different store on, on, on your computer, right? Or maybe you told some of your friends that, oh, this brand sucks, right? You just decided to shop elsewhere in the future or you left a bad review, which I don't know about you, but this is probably one of the most damning things that can happen to your brand image when people go onto review sites and leave low star reviews. It's difficult to come back from. I know personally, I was just about to book a vacation, looking forward to getting that vaccine soon. 
and ha had a place in mind and then noticed that there were some bad reviews. They had not hired back enough people to work at the hotel from the pandemic and they're just not ready. So we canceled the vacation, right? Bad reviews are a buying indicator. People use them to make purchasing decisions. So there is a reason that this problem has not been fully solved until now. And it is because fundamentally the way that organizations do their customer support. And when I say support, by the way, I'm not just talking about post-sale interaction. I'm also talking about these pre-sale interaction moments. And the example I just gave was a pre-sale interaction, shopping of, of, of looking for a hotel. It's, it's because the, 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 the contact center model, which is the predominant way that people think about trying to staff for their customer support, is unscalable. Because of that, brands are required to make costly compromises that result in these crappy experiences that people are having. Tushy, you on that one? So it looks like this for us inside the organizations. These are backlogs, we have wait times, we have limited hour availability when we're telling people we can be there on chat or we're gonna get back to you in 48 hours. Um, hello from Ghana, by the way, very cool. Um, we also have to employ unwanted deflection tactics. Well, we're not available here. So on, on chat right now, even though we, you thought we were, but it's really just a bot that no one's behind and we really can't answer your question. So please go send us an email. That's a deflection tactic. You're pushing somebody to a channel that they didn't want to go to. And availability of talent tends to be a significant hurdle for people. We want the best people representing our brand. We can't have a suffering in that quality. It's really difficult, really limiting in the contact center model. The now CX model, which is what the now customer demands, allows you to do away with the preparation that's required so that you're always ready. You don't need to prep. You don't need to say, well, we need this many people by this time and that's how we're gonna staff. It allows you to make customer first decisions and engage customers which, on whichever channel they are. Certainly you do not wanna be deflecting customers and telling them where they have to engage with you. You want all of your customers and prospective customers to become fans. VIPs, you want them to feel like VIPs. I think Zappos has always did an amazing, has done an amazing job of that. You feel like a VIP by just being a customer and you go tell other people. You go tell other people that story. And lastly, I think that we are held back by a troubling branding problem internally that customer service is a cost to the organization. That is a problem because it does not allow for people to say, wait a second, aren't the customers the revenue? Aren't we doing the revenue thing in the organization? and then lean into how do I grow revenue? I think too many organizations, and this comes from the top, I actually believe that this is fundamentally a problem from the top of a lot of organizations. They say, you need to go and you need to spend less and you need to cut costs. And so you go and you try to execute a strategy that is not actually pro customer. And the now CX movement is all about being pro-customer and driving increased revenue and lifetime value. I was talking to, so, so I'm writing a book right now about, about this. I'm super passionate about this topic. If other people are also really passionate about this, I want to talk to you. I want to hear from you. I'm still getting a, a last couple of quotes into the book. Um, so I was talking to, I was talking to, this was an existing customer of, of ours at Simpler. And I said, you know, he works for a company called Happiest Baby. And Happiest Baby makes a product that saves babies' lives and helps babies sleep longer. And then the parents, as a result, get to sleep longer. And he said, you know, we sell peace of mind. And it doesn't matter to, in, in some ways what the other things that we're selling are. The value that we're really selling is peace of mind to parents. 
And when I was asking him, what is the biggest benefit to you of using Simpler? <laughs> Normally, I talk to people about a chart and it says, what we are able to do is variableize your cost. You don't have to do any of this planning. And as you can see here, it's this image, right? It's effective spend. It's an efficient way of doing it. You can scale easily. But Matt said it much better than I feel like I said it because he said, what you did was you gave me peace of mind because now we are never letting any of our customers down and our customers are the most important thing to our business their mission driven business around their customers so so if there's any if there's any takeaway it is that the customer expectation has gone through the roof there's revenue just sitting on the table to be able to meet that demand for the customer and that the now cx movement is definitely here What does it mean? It means you have to be this fast. It means you have to be this consistent. Less than 30 seconds on chat, less than three hours on email. That's how you drive these performance metrics up. CSAT, repeat purchase rate. By the way, I'm hot on repeat purchase rate, um, not, just, not just CSAT. All right, so I will pause right here and um, we, can, we can do questions. Amazing. Yeah, I always love listening to you, Daniel. I think anyone who listens to you can just see the passion you have for, for great uh, customer support and service. So we appreciate that. A few questions before we let you off the hook. One is uh, from Zoe. She's asking, she'd love to hear thoughts on more self-service options for customers versus truly hands-on, personal and available customer support. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question, right? Because, um, because there's, a, there's a blend. So, so, so I think that I think that everyone should be thinking about what is in the best interest of how the customer wants to interact with us. There's a certain percentage of both people and question types that you want to have. You want to have as self-help, or you want to knock off with auto responses, with with some type of assisted, you know, a bot type of type of response. The, the trick here though, is you don't want to leave people hanging if you cannot then finish that interaction with automation. Um, and so um, Zoe or Zoe, however you pronounce, pronounce that, pronounce your name, that's a great question. And, and if you wanna dive into that more, um, I, I'd, love to, I'd, I'd love to talk to you more about what, what you're facing and what you're looking to do. Absolutely. And then the final question, we'll let you off, is I posted uh, one of your poll questions about, as a consumer, have you ever felt neglected or and ignored by a com uh, company's customer service? 50% uh, of people said yes, and that's why they took their business elsewhere. 50% of people said yes, they have been affected negatively, but then they give them the benefit of the doubt. To your point about our expectations increasing, do you think that we're going to see a change in that, or we're going to have less people giving brands the benefit of the doubt and, and instead opting for one of their competitors in the future? Yeah, um, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people about this and asking them a, a you know a very similar question, especially in the context of as I mentioned, we're, we're writing a book and I'm I'm trying to ask some people some forward-looking questions. Um, everyone has said that they just think the amount of time that somebody is willing to have as that grace period is just shrinking and will continue to shrink. Yeah. Which I which I found somewhat. I was kind of hoping in in a way for for all of our sakes that it would kind of flatten out a little bit, but it was like, no, it's going to continue to be, I just, this, I want it now. I want it now. Veruca salt thing is just going to, we're going to yeah. become more Veruca salt, but not necessarily a higher percentage of people. It's just that the threshold just keeps, keeps getting worse. A hundred percent. And that's what we see as well. Uh, I was supposed to introduce Daniel and, and say his fun fact, which we do for all of our speakers. So I'm going to do that now. Daniel, you said you caught passes from two NFL QBs. Can you tell us who those two NFL QBs were? Absolutely. And I just wanted everyone to know for the record that I um, am not a professional football player, never have been and never will be. That's not in my future at this point. Um, so I had I had the good fortune at a like a charity golf event when I was when I was a kid uh, I was a, I was a teenager um, I caught a pass from Dan Marino the Hall of Fame legend wow. um, which was totally by accident 
um, in the sense that I didn't realize that by going to this thing, when I asked him to sign the football that I had found in this person's garage that that was that was living on this golf course, when I asked him to sign the football, I didn't know that he would say go out for a pass. And when he said go out for right. a pass and zipped that ball, and I did catch it by the way, I <laughs> was freaking out. <laughs> I probably yeah, needed absolutely. a tushy to come save me out there on the golf course in that moment. I also was lucky <laughs> enough to, um, I was in the same year as Ryan Fitzpatrick. We both went to Harvard yeah. and I played wow. a casual game of catch with, with Fitzy back in, back in the day. You guys on a, a, a short name basis, eh, Fitzy? That's quite the story. <laughs> well, awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much again, Daniel, uh, for joining us. And definitely re tell everybody, I'm telling everybody here to, to reach out to Daniel if you, if you guys need help with your customer support. Excellent. And the Yeti Cooler, the Yeti oh, right. Cooler is, is coming from us. Yeti is one of, is one of the companies that, that trusts Simpler with their brand interactions. So we wanted to spread some Yeti love. Exactly. Thank you for that reminder. I'm actually going to do that right now. I close my eyes. I scroll through everybody who's on air with us right now and I pick a lucky winner. And right now I have Nick Eklund uh, from Drink Hint, I believe. So Nick, congratulations on winning that Yeti cooler. Um, if you can reach out to us after this webinar to get your shipping address, then we'll have that sent over to you. Congratulations again, Nick Eklund. Awesome. All right, thanks so much, Daniel. See you guys. All right, cool. We're going to keep the party going. Super excited to be welcoming Ren from Hello Tushy, who is our featured merchant. Hello, Ren. How are you? Hi, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Very excited to talk about the future of customer service and, and what it looks like now. Awesome. All right. I'll let you get your screen up and running, and then I'm just going to give you a quick introduction. Cool. Yeah. All right. So Ren is the director of customer experience, which is a super important role for Hello Tushy. She has lived as a legal resident in four different countries and soon to be a fifth. That is her fun fact, which is pretty fun, I would say. And Ren, yeah, as I said, she's the director of CX, uh, a modern bidet company whose aim is to revolutionize, modernize, and improve the American bathroom. I think it only take a few minutes for you to see that they're, they've accomplished that goal and then some. So thanks so much for joining us, Ren. Uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, and I think I'm creating a vortex of windows. Oh, so let me just. We're in the matrix now. See what's the best <laughs> way? Yeah, guide. Yeah, if you just want to. Yeah, wanna, totally in the matrix. If you just want to open up your, just click the slide deck tab and just hit present at the top right. That should be okay. Yeah, just to the left of the share button there. That should be fine. And we can still hear and see. All right, you, you guys so seeing this? There. I'm not seeing you, so. Yeah, we can see your slides. Okay, You're good great. to go. Cool. Um, let's see. Cool. No, sorry, I'm technologically. I'm just trying to get my notes. Sorry, one second. No worries. I can uh, I can put it on my screen if you'd like, Ren. Okay. No, I've got it. it. Took me a second. I'm clearly not a millennial. <laughs> so hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, to Gorgeous for hosting this amazing space. Um, as Chris mentioned, I'm the director of customer experience here at Tushy. And we've been working with Gorgeous for close to two years now to easily manage our customer interactions and provide a really incredible experience to prospective and current members of the Clean Butt Club. Sorry, quick So quick as Chris there, mentioned, Ren. go ahead. Oh, sorry, Ren. Yeah, sorry, Ren. Uh, just what we're seeing, we're seeing the, the notes as well, um, and we're not seeing the full presentation oh, deck. So um, I don't know if you have multi-screen right now. You might be able to just slide one of them onto yeah, that screen. Well. Or I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to have the deck up on my screen if you'd like, and you can just kind of just, t just give me the nod when you want to switch, uh, switch tabs. Yeah, let's do that. I'll rely on you to my MC if you don't mind. Thank you so much. No, no problem. All righty. Here we go. So we can start with the uh, the second slide there. Cool. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So as Chris mentioned, uh, we are a bidet company. You can go back to that previous one there. 
It's right there. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so Tushy's first hit product was an affordable Tushy bidet, which attaches to any toilet and cleans your butt much better than toilet paper. Uh, we thought it's time for Americans to catch up with other parts of the world where bathroom hygiene is decades ahead. Uh, we've since launched a lot of other gorgeous products and are constantly thinking about how to lighten our impact on the planet uh, while also making your bathroom a sexier place to be. Um, so here you can see some of our current product offerings, the Tushy Classic 3.0, the Tushy Ottoman, now rated one of the top toilet stools on the market, and one of our newest product, the Tushy Stand and Tissues. All right, you can go to the next slide, Chris. So not only is Tushy easy to install, but can be a real game changer when it comes to personal hygiene, health, and well-being. Of course, household savings by reducing or eliminating totally uh, costly toilet paper, and of course, super beneficial for the planet by relying on water rather than trees. Um, did you guys know that toilet paper is one of the most expensive consumer goods, and we're literally flushing it down the toilet? Um, fun fact. All right, you can go on to the next one, please. Um, and it's so easy to install. Here, one of our customers was so stoked on that, they reached out to share how their seven-year-old had done most of the work. So that was pretty fun. And this is you know, a fun aspect of our job here. Um, all right, next one. So what have been the challenges for Tushy in these wild times that I used to say a year, but now we're going on over a year. Um, so we're a small Brooklyn, New York based company that since the onset of COVID has gone remote. And this is when I joined Tushy exactly a year ago today, coincidentally, as an entrepreneur displaced from a recently launched travel startup who had a strong love for service and operations with a penchant for a clean butthole. Um, I'd been a Tushy fan and user for years and could explain all the ins and outs of Tushy, but we're facing quite a few challenges. Um, since the onset of Corona, most of the world has been affected in some way or another. And I'm sure if you work in e-commerce, you know that the challenges have been acute. Uh, shipping and staffing challenges just to begin, right? I'm sure you guys have all been feeling this. Um, for us, the past year was kickstarted with the great TP crisis of 2020, as we like to call it, which led to a massive adoption of bidets in the United States and Canada. Countries prior to this largely unfamiliar with the concept of, well, washing their asses. Um, we promptly sold through our inventory and were left with the shortage for months and with the logistical woes that the world was facing, not great answers for our customers. Um, everything from the production to packing to shipping to receiving to distribution from carriers was heavily impacted and not all customers were understanding. And that's where it's important to rely on a stellar team who can really uphold the customer experience. Even if they're just explaining that they won't have the product um, that they want for months, and, and this can be really hard. Um, this takes grace and great technology like Gorgeous to be able to carry through on promises made and follow up with our customers. Um, you can go to the next one, Chris. Um, So this is where it was really important for, for us to focus on our values and make sure that those were shining through. Um, so best in class, I'm sure that's a goal for everyone. Um, and the way we do that is by always going above and beyond. And when people think of great customer experience, we want Tushy to be top of mind. You know, We want to be there with Zappos. Um, we try to be really menchy, we're, which means, you know, if you're not familiar with Yiddish, uh, we're easygoing and treat everyone like our best friend. And that's the tone of voice that we take with all of our customers. A few days past your return date and you couldn't get to the post office, we know it's COVID, it sucks. Um, no worries, we've got your back. Need a spare part but don't know how to use the promo code or want to make the trip to Home Depot? We'll send that to you for free and send you a tutorial video on how to install it. Um, we try to be really innovative in everything that we do from you know, our cheeky marketing and all the way through to CX. And what that looks like for us is you can set up an appointment with a pro installer over video and walk you through every step of the way, even if you have to run to your garage seven times. I've definitely waited for someone to do that. Um, 
We try to be really fun and funny too. Um, our copy game is strong, thanks to Corinne, the voice of Tushy. And one of the best part of our jobs is, as uh, Daniel alluded to earlier, our inner seven-year-old can come out to play with the choices of toilet talk and we're lauded for it. And it's not like at the dinner table when you were seven that you would get sent to your room. Um, we try to be really intelligent. And our purus are innate problem solvers. In fact, that is one of the main uh, components for being on this team. And they're wicked smart. Um, did you know we have a published author? We have former diplomats on our team. We have stand-up comedians. We have a wide range, but they're all whip smart. Um, the next thing that's really important is to make it memorable. Um, just like our, you know, famous shirt shows, you know, something that will stick in your mind. The interactions that we have with our customers don't just stand out as great customer service compared to the rest, but with the freedom that we have to be our weird selves and regale their booties with the best, these are very memorable interactions. So, you know, we want everyone to shine for who they are. And, and lastly, we really focus on surprising and delighting. Um, the crux of cleaning those crusty holes, uh, that's, that's where the magic happens. All the ways that um, we love to spoil our poopers. So we do things like sending out t-shirts, uh, sending out spare parts that they're not aware that we have, uh, recommending video installation support, uh, sending prepaid return labels, all the things that could become problems for a customer. We like to turn them on their heads and make them really fun ways to surprise and delight. All right, you can go to the next slide, please. Um, and so what I've been feeling for a long time, and I think we've all felt this year, is that customers are yearning for real human connection and interactions. Um, in a world of bots, automation, and call centers, they're wanting more real human connectedness, you know, and oftentimes small problems or huge ones, 2020 anyone, <laughs> can make customers love us even more. We have an opportunity to delight, cheer up, and make lifelong brand advocates, or as we like to call them, ambassadors, <laughs> in every interaction with our customers. Um, so, you know, don't despair about these small little things that go wrong, or even big things that go wrong, because these are all things that are not only meaningful, but can also move the needle on lifetime customer value, especially in a time where we're working so hard for people to click on Facebook ads and Instagram ads and all of these things that also have a high cost to us. Never underestimate um, these connections with your support team as being super, super valuable. You know, it's, it's these relationships that will make people come back to you again and again. Um, and so referring back to the issues that we were experiencing, so the, lots of people in the spring of 2020 were met with less than favorable fulfillment experiences. If they came in contact with our team, their experience was lightly, greatly enhanced. And these are all thanks to our PURUs, our, our team of, of expert customer support agents. Um, so you can go to the next slide there. Please. Um, so why are they so important? Um, our expert team of purus, uh, as we call them, poop gurus, because they're masters of all things for the booty in the baño, um, they're key to our incredible customer experiences here at Tushy. Uh, they're focused on elevating the whole Tushy experience, not merely responding to emails, as often happens with customer support teams. Our team is here to help you improve every aspect of the way you do your daily duty. We're also experts in basic plumbing, hybrid shipping, reverse logistics, general hygiene, renewable bamboo forests, toddler toilet training, and we can guide you through every possible way to dry your most sensitive parts from the most to least sustainable. And believe it or not, that is the most asked question we get on a daily basis. How do I dry myself? Um, makes me wonder, about these people who have homes, credit cards, jobs, but every single day, how do I dry my ass? <laughs> um, but the Purus, most important of all, uh, were quite famous for being world-class butt kissers in the most delightful of ways, of course. Um, so, you know, we are really moving the culture here. And so it's really important to educate folks how to enjoy greater booty bliss. And that could be from installation issues to usage questions. Um, the other thing is, uh, they are the eyes and the ears of Tushy. You know, in a world where everybody wants to automate everything, it's really important to listen to your customers and and actually listen to them. And so, you know, messages can be seen as one-off interactions to resolve, but we look at them instead as valuable opportunity to capture feedback and share with all other departments so that we can continually improve and in turn better serve the members of the Clean Butt Club. 
Um, and lastly, um, you know, they may, our customers may love our incredible marketing, branding, packaging, the product itself. It's all fantastic, but oftentimes a delightful interaction with one of the purus is what makes them a fan for life. Um, so yeah, never undervalue these little things like where is my order? You can really um, build relationships that will last forever. Um, all right, you can go to the next one, please. And so what does that look like for a customer experience team? So we've got these amazing purus, I call them the dream team on the daily, and but they don't do their work on their own. So we've created really robust systems so our purus can be successful and help customers the way they want to be helped. So it all starts with hiring. For me, that's like the bottom line. And we rely on a dream team, as I said, that is built upon the belief that only true empathetic compassionate individuals with the collaborative spirit and zero egos make the cut to me those are like the four things that are non-negotiables and and innate problem solvers too um, we don't treat customer service like it's a basic entry-level job only rock stars make the cut and that's why our team is comprised as i mentioned before of former diplomats published authors improv professionals from Upright Citizens Brigade, for those of you who are familiar. Um, we even have Broadway actors, um, and the list goes on. You know, Because we're a New York-based company, we have a lot of really fun talent in the mix, and all of them are able to shine through this role because of their natural talents as well. Um, so starting with a strong base, it's important to build tools that can support their success because there's a ton to learn and remember. Um, changing culture ain't easy, and though they're professionals, Without great tech, their job would be impossible. Um, so I look at it kind of as the two facets, the human side and the tech side. So, you know, in addition to having a really intense training program, which we call the tushy ass room, like a classroom, um, they also have a really robust internal knowledge base to rely on, which is close to 300 articles that go from, you know, fulfillment options to the size of angle valves in Morocco. You know, there's a ton of plumbing knowledge in addition to regular e-commerce knowledge. And yeah, we don't expect these uh, purus to be licensed plumbers, but pretty damn near close. <laughs> so um, real knowledge, you know, everyone in the team is really, really smart, but it's a ton to remember. And, you know, I, on the end of a shift, I don't, um, expect anyone after an eight hour day to be able to relay exactly how to install a flushometer installation kit with precision every time and that's where macros come in you know we have over 300 macros that are not to, meant to be you know bot responses but uh carefully crafted responses that an agent knows how to execute upon and they're not just giving blind responses you know they're, they might be using a couple together but that way we can give really quality responses that are accurate and then you know the agent the puru imbues them with their own personal tone and, and any other necessary information but they can rely on these pre-crafted um tutorial for example um, the other thing, you know, we have a really comprehensive, uh, sorry, Chris, we lost you there. We have a really, comp oh, and um, yeah, maybe my, if you could just go sorry, back. Sorry, Ren, I don't, have access, I don't have access to this video. <laughs> okay, just... let me see, yeah. Well, let me finish the previous slide, and then I'll see if we can uh, finish this one up, and that's the last one. So if you can just go back one second. And I can maybe share my screen for this one too. Cool. Um, so the comprehensive instruction manual, you know, it's great for people that are visual, you know, they like to read instructions, but not everyone learns the same. I was a teacher for 10 years, so I can speak to that a lot. If you could just go back to the previous slide, Chris. Thank you. Um, but in the instruction manual, we also have QR links that can go to videos, that can go to contact us, it even has a playlist. And so again, meeting people where they are. And, and then the next thing that we implemented recently is the self-serve portal on Gorgeous. You know, we have this amazing team that really wants to educate everyone how to dry their booty, how to, you know, use it if you're a toddler. But as you all know, you spend a lot of time on Wismos. Where is my order? Where is my order? Where is my order? And so that's, you know, finding a really nice balance between tech um, 
of being able to easily look up an order status. And so you, they can spend more time on, but I'm a woman, will this even work for me? I menstruate once a month and we can go into depth about how to deal with that and not waste time on where's my order. Um, but also really important to us is that it's very clear when you're um, choosing these self-serve options that it's self-serve or you're talking to a human. Um, our chat, we call it a real pooping human. It's a real person. You know, We don't want to be tricked that we're talking to a bot and then you get five minutes in and you realize, oh, this isn't a person. And so, you know, again, speaking to people the way they want to be spoken to. They can self-serve or they can talk to someone. And then lastly, uh, tutorial videos on YouTube, really leveraging tech to um, help people any time of day. You know, we have a really robust library of all things tushy, but at the same time, that's not for everyone. Or trying to explain to my parents who just discovered YouTube this year, uh, they were very proud of themselves. Have you ever watched YouTube? Um, but for them, the perfect fit would be the real time video installation support where people can have a conference call in the bathroom for the first time and admit where they are and we can walk through every step of the installation process wherever they're located and um, yeah help people the way that they want to be helped um, so let's see if i can share this video i'll share it from my side um, let's see let me see if i can figure this out again apologies for my lack of tech. I swear when it comes to CX, I know some of this stuff. <laughs> okay, so when I'm sharing the screen, sorry, Chris, if you can describe me, I select Chrome tab. Yeah, you just select whatever tab has the, uh, the okay. video that you're trying to show. Okay, cool. Let's see, that's not the one. Yeah, if uh, when you share, it'll prompt you to select which view, and you can do presenter view, um, or, or you can just hit the, the general presentation option. Okay. There we go. All right, are you guys all seeing this? Cool. All right, so let me just make yep. sure the sound, this is the one thing about sound. Um, sounds good? Okay, cool. Um, so to just end things, and so you guys can all get a full view of what the Tushy experience is like, uh, this is a video sent in by a first-time customer, Dan, who's located in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We didn't pay him for this. We didn't ask him to do this. We have this idea that we really want to capture everyone's first squirt, but we haven't even launched this campaign yet. And this is the kind of job that we have that people send in these videos, not all the time, but unsolicited. They're just so tickled. Um, and I think this is a really great intro into bidet life. Um, so, so here we go. This is a uh, day that I just installed and I'm going to use it now. We'll see what happens. Oh boy. I hope I don't speckle my bathroom with shit. <laughs> that was a direct hit. I'm not sure if it was. Chunks off anyway. <laughs> no spackle. 
<laughs> well. Yeah, so we did edit it by adding in, you know, the holy music, but everything else uh, was all from Dan. And one of the agents was like totally afraid, like to watch this, like I don't know what I'm gonna see. And he he executed gracefully for a for a non uh, influencer. <laughs> Amazing. Well, look, Ren, uh, that was phenomenal. Um, that was uh, even better than I'd expected. I actually posted a poll mid mid through your presentation on how many more butt puns you were gonna push. <laughs> Um, and I set that over and under at five and almost everybody said you were going to do more than five and you did not disappoint them. I didn't think any of us were expecting a live demo or a recorded demo of uh, one of your customers. So that was, that's some phenomenal sales tactics. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have time to, to get to the questions, but there are a few questions in the chat. If you don't mind, Ren, when you hop offline, just answering those. I know there's a lot of brands with us that want to pick your brain. Um, but uh, before we, we jump off, I'm just going to share my screen and we're going to give a the winner announced the winner for the special giveaway. So yeah, so Tushy was was nice enough to offer up a two hundred fifty dollar gift card. I think everyone here is chomping at the bit to get their own bidet, and so I'm just going to scroll uh, randomly through our our live list here to find one lucky winner. All right, and the lucky winner is Bianca Lopez, customer success lead uh, at Co Edition. Um, so Bianca, if you're live with us, if you could reach out afterwards um, to me, we're gonna get you that. Uh, yeah, that, she's online. Awesome. Yay. Well, congratulations, yeah. Bianca. You're you're uh, you're gonna be a part of the the butt club with the the Tushy family. So congratulations on that. And thanks cool. again, Ren, so much for joining us. I really do appreciate your time. Yeah, of course. Excited to be here and reach out to our team if you have any questions about Tushy and feel free to reach out to me too. You can find me Ren at hellotushy.com. Amazing. So All right. Take care, Ren. Thanks so much. All righty. Cool. We're going to keep the show going here and try to get us back on time. And so next up is uh, Gorgeous. And so I'm fortunate enough to be presenting for the Gorgeous team today. And so uh, I'm the MC, but I'm also uh, leading the tech partnerships team at Gorgeous, which means I get to work with a lot of our our tech partners, including some of which are on the panel with us today. And so I'm going to dive into what Gorgeous is just to kind of set the stage for everybody. And then I'm going to dive into um, how specifically we're enabling merchants to deliver stellar customer experience in what is becoming a more difficult environment to do so as customer expectations uh, go through the roof. So who we are, if you're not familiar with Gorgeous, we're a customer support help desk that was built specifically for e-commerce merchants. We're built from the ground up with this way, which means we have super tight integrations with all the major e-com platforms like Shopify, meaning all that information about your customer that you have living inside of Shopify we're pulling that in, into Gorgeous and displaying that right next to the conversation that you're having with your customer. And so that's super important because it makes it easy to understand your customers, give them a more personalized experience, but ultimately answer their questions in a timely fashion, which is um, what matters most. In terms of who we work with, um, Tushy, uh, we're very blessed to uh, be working with Tushy. They're one of the longest standing Gorgeous customers. What I love about Tushy is they use Gorgeous in such a, a phenomenal way. If you, if you see the macros that they use, which we'll get into in a bit, um, they really struck a perfect balance of automation and speed with personalization, which I think is really difficult to do. And so Tushy is a great case study to study in understanding how merchants can, can do just that. All right, so let's just jump right into it. We've had uh, a few speakers today talk about how important uh, customer support is in the context of keeping your customers happy. Just going to share a little bit of data with you before we jump into how our product works, just to set the stage on how important um, CS is in terms of impacting some key metrics. And so in terms of uh, how it impacts retention, which is obviously one of the major metrics you study about customer support, there's a great uh, recent Shopify report called Customer Retention 101, where they essentially studied uh, through thousands and thousands of customer interactions what the impact of each of these categories was on your retention. And so what this, uh, how you can interpret this chart is if you assume you do the absolute best job possible, meaning you do 100% job, this is the impact that you can uh, imagine it will have on your retention. So if you deliver a perfect uh, service, then you can expect that that's going to have a 32% impact on your retention, for instance. Um, and so this is showing us what the most important things are. And so the, the big picture here, if you can take away one thing from the slide, is that moving into the future, the three most important things when it comes to great customer support and experience is you need to deliver fast and immediate responses. You need to deliver personalized uh, customer experiences. 
and you need to be able to automate as much as possible. And so we know as consumers ourselves, uh, Daniel was speaking about this earlier, our expectations are through the roof. So as soon as you start to encounter friction, uh, a brand isn't reaching out to you fast enough or giving you the information you need, you're just gonna be super turned off. And you're, if, you're, if you don't have super brand loyalty that, to that specific merchant, you're just gonna go find the next best thing on the market. And so it's really important that you deliver fast, personalized, and uh, exceptional customer experience every single time, or you're not gonna be hitting these numbers. And so the hardest one to hit on this slide is service beyond expectations. And so this is only accounts for up to 12%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but this could be the difference between hitting your year over year growth, growth goals or falling well short um, and not stacking up to your competitors. And so this is the one that merchants really need to be focusing on is how can I go above and beyond what say my competitors are doing um, so I can get 12% extra retention, um, which a lot of brands quite frankly aren't getting because they're not putting enough effort into it. So that begs the question, okay, how does Gorgeous help merchants achieve just that? How do we help turn support into a profit center, which is our, our hero slogan. And as cheesy as it sounds, it really is true. And I, hopefully I'll be convincing you to be that today. So the first thing we do, like any good business or brand, is we actually analyze and study what our customers are asking. And so what we mean by this is the, the merchants we work with, like Tushy, we actually study what their customers are asking them. And we want to do our best at enabling them to answer those questions as fast as possible, but also balancing personalization with that, um, which is the holy grail of CS. And so we analyzed over 10,000 different conversations that customers were having with our merchants, our brands, and here's the, the distribution of, of those responses. And so um, order status, you can see, accounts for up to 33% of all of the customer inquiries you're gonna have. I know brands with us today are probably thinking, yep, that's exactly right. Uh, most of the questions we do get are around order status. And then what this means, is you want to be uh, answering these questions as fast as possible because these take up the, the, the most of your volume. So some of our brands, they get upwards of 10 to 25,000 tickets or unique conversations per month. You need to be automating as much of those as possible, but still giving them that personalized experience. A, a lot of the other categories here, while well, in smaller percentages, are still super important. So um, things like product suggestion, product question, these are pre-sale questions for the most part. And so if you're getting 10 to 20,000 tickets a month, this could equate to thousands of, of questions from your customers that haven't made a purchase yet, that if you're not answering them in a fast, personalized and excellent way, you're gonna lose that opportunity. And so this type of data is super important for us in driving the product decisions we make because we wanna continuously bake more and more improvements into our product to make it easier for merchants to answer these questions in a fast and personalized way. And so now just diving into the gorgeous product and how it actually helps customers achieve this, as I mentioned, we have this super deep integration with Shopify um, and the other major e-com platforms, which means it's pulling in all the information you have about your customer into the co customer conversation. So in this particular instance, Michelle is asking if she can update her shipping address um, for the specific order number. We already had the order number likely, uh, but we can go ahead and take action easily. And so this is a good example of responding fast, but also it gives you the opportunity to be personalized with them as well, which is really important. So this is an example of the Shopify tab that you would see inside of Gorgeous for any of your customers. Personalization at scale. So one thing I actually have learned a lot from Ren specifically is, you know, I was talking about all these automation things uh, we can do on an interview a few months ago with Ren. And she's like, yeah, well, automation is great and we love that, but personalization is also super important to us. And so I really took note of that. And, and Gorgeous definitely enables you to do that. And so Ren talked about macros, which are essentially canned responses that allow you to build out a, a templated message that you can send automatically or manually. We can bake in these Shopify variables. And so um, you can write this nice personalized message. If you see some of the messages that come from Tushy, they're, they're, they're phenomenally drafted. And what this will do is the moment you hit send or it was sent automatically, it will fill in all of these Shopify variables automatically. And so you don't have to go into Shopify, switch tabs, and uh, track down that information. It's all just gonna be pulled in automatically through our integration with them, which saves you a ton of time. Our machine learning will detect the intent of your customer's messages. And so it can detect it as a stock related question, a specific product question, a shipping uh, question, and it will automatically tag that ticket, put it into the appropriate bucket, and whatever CS agent on your team is uh, tasked with handling specific tickets, um, they can go into that bucket knowing, yep, ex I know exactly what these tickets are gonna be about because the machine learning features has already read the tickets, read the messages, and then analyzed them and applied the appropriate ticket. And this is really important, as you can imagine, as we move into the future, people's expectations are higher. If we're tagging tickets as VIP or urgent or broken product, you want those tickets and questions answered as fast as possible. And so our machine learning makes it really easy to do that. And it's getting better and better. Rules is another really powerful feature of Gorgeous. And so what this enables you to do is build these 
build these automatic responses for your most commonly asked questions. It could even be more niche, less frequently asked questions, but nonetheless are really important to, to answer. And so the way this works is you can build a series of logic statements that if satisfied will execute on a predefined action. And so uh, in this particular case, whenever a new ticket or a message with a, a customer comes up and the message contains any of the, the phrases or words, where is my order, which as I said, is one of the most commonly asked questions, then it's gonna reply with this specific macro, which will send that response that I showed you a few slides earlier. And so this is a, a great way for brands to answer these questions as fast as possible. You can personalize the response messages however you'd like, and you can embed those Shopify variables. So you're getting all the information you need, you're giving them a personalized experience, but you're giving them that rapid um, response, which is key, as I said, especially for those pre-sale chats um, because you're not going to lose the sale. And then for the post-sale ones, you're going to improve your retention because you're going to keep your customers happy. Another big uh, feature of Gorgeous is we really like to consider ourselves an omni-channel help desk, which means we're connecting with your customers across every uh, avenue that they could possibly interact with your store. So whether it's email, phone, SMS, all your social channels, we're making sure that you're, you're connected to them across those channels, not just through, say, email. And so social media is a great example of this. On Instagram or Facebook, for instance, if they're commenting on one of your posts, we can detect that. We'll pull it inside of Gorgeous. We can detect the intent of it. So here's a good example of someone commenting on uh, the, a post. They said the backpack looks awesome. We'll see that inside of Gorgeous. You can respond to them and, and offer them, a, incentivize them with a discount code. If they execute on that, that'll be tracked as a sale with inside of Gorgeous. So it really makes it easy to connect with your customers, even if they're not just connecting or emailing you with a, a support related question. Um, we have Facebook Messenger integration, which is really popular with our merchants. One of the most heavily requested integrations that we didn't have up until now is Instagram DMs, but that's going to be launching uh, in April. And what this will enable you to do is all the Instagram DM conversations that you might be having with your customers on your official Instagram um, handle, you'll be able to pull all those conversations in. You'll have all of this customer information associated with their Shopify account. And which makes it really easy to create upselling opportunities, connect with your customers even more so than you already are, um, which is obviously going to have a huge impact on your retention. One of the final things I'll note here is our self-serve portal. And so um, obviously reacting to customers who have actually submitted official inquiries is really important. But what about actually preventing those inquiries from actually coming in in the first place? And so we recognize that as a limitation of our product previously. And so we've built out this really robust self-serve portal that will enable merchants or sorry customers to resolve as much of their issues as possible so they don't actually have to escalate it to a live ticket. So we have an example here of a customer um, on a specific website. This, this self-serve chat will pop up here. They can track an order or they can report an issue. They, answer, they enter their email and order number and then it will display all of their previous orders. Um, they can get hit the tracking button to see an update on where that specific uh, order is. You can see that there. Um, in the future iterations of this, you'll have even more capabilities to act on your own. So you could uh, say, get a refund, you could uh, issue a return and exchange on your own. And so we're super excited to, for the self-serve portal to um, save you even more time answering questions. And then the final piece is I talked about how we turn this into a revenue center. And so obviously delivering better customer support is gonna improve your retention and LTV in a vacuum, that's great. Um, but also the upselling capabilities that Gorgeous enables is, is top notch. And so a simple example is I'm dealing with Ren. She's a, a customer of mine. She's asking me a lot of complicated questions. I finished delivering her stellar customer support. And at the end of it, I say, you know, really happy I could help you out today, Ren. By the way, I noticed you're a big fan of our blueberry soda. By the way, we just launched our orange soda. I think you might be a fan of it. Here's a 10% discount code. You know, hope you enjoy your weekend. And if she says, great, I, I love orange soda. I'm going to click this, uh, this coupon link and she executes on that. That'll be attributed as a sale with inside of Gorgeous. So it makes it really easy to track your performance of your sales from your support. So turning support from a cost center into a revenue center. You can segment this across agents. So you can see who your top performing agents are. You can see how the channels are performing from a revenue side of things. And so it, it's, it's, it's suffice to say that some of our brands are doing a phenomenal job generating you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month just from support, which I think is pretty phenomenal. And then the last piece is our integration stack. So Gorgeous on its own is, is, is truly a, a great product that makes it really easy for brands to deliver great customer support. But once you start factoring all these different apps and integrations that actually plug into our product, 
it transforms it into something even more, which is one thing I love most about my job is to see how gorgeous plus all of these different apps and techs in the space really turns it into something even more phenomenal. And so um, some of the speakers with us today, we have integrations with like lateshipment.com, which will proactively create a ticket inside of gorgeous when a shipping delay is, is, um, is, is anticipated, which I think is pretty awesome. Klaus is a, is a customer support QA tool, which you're about to hear from in a minute that will essentially allow you to assess the performance of your, your customer support in a vacuum, um, which I think is pretty awesome as well. And so this is to say that Gorgeous is great, but once considered with all of our other integration partners, turns it into something even better. And that's it for me. I hope that I was able to convince you that um, Gorgeous is making it easy for merchants to give that great customer support. If you do have any questions about our product or any integrations, definitely feel free to reach out to me at chrisatgorgeous.com. And we do have a special one month free offer for any brands with us today that are really interested in trying out Gorgeous. And then uh, just to finish up here, I'm going to be giving away um, my special giveaway, which is a set of AirPod Pros. I have my favorite gift here with Shaq. He's uh, gonna help me out to distribute this. So I'm just gonna scroll through the list again and pick one lucky winner. All right, so we have Sarah Esplana, a customer service lead at 12thTribe.com. So Sarah, if you're still with us, you're the, the lucky winner of the set of AirPod Pros. And I'll sync up with you afterwards to uh, distribute those to you. All right, that's it for me. If you have any questions, definitely post it in the chat. I'll make sure that I get to it. And with that, we're just going to keep this show going here. And I'm going to turn things over to close. Hello, hello. That means Hey, I Valentina. Hey. Welcome to the stage. I'll let you get your uh, I'll let you get your uh, screen up and running, and then I'll uh, I'll give you a quick introduction. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah. Happy to to introduce Valentina. She's the uh, Empress of Product, which is definitely a very serious title. And uh, once you hear her speak, I know you'll see that that is a she's definitely appropriate title. Her fun fact is she wrote a book about remote leadership, which I'm curious to learn more about. And uh, her. Her background is, you know, she's the Empress of Product and Guardian of Remote at Close. With a background in CX, she's personally invested in making Close the best quality management tool possible for real customer support professionals, no office required. Really excited to have you with us today, Valentina. And I'll turn the floor over to you. I think we're having, I'm just going to go with entire screen. No worries. I'm happy to uh, share, this, share my screen if you need me to. We have problem accessing your webcam or mic, but you can hear me and you can see me. Why? Yeah. Did you uh, hit the uh, the share screen button there at the bottom? Yeah, I, I did share screen and then it's Firefox said, I don't like you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to go with, <laughs> with, the, no with your stress. screen. No stress. Oh, here we my, go. I think I found the the problem. Quit? No, no. I'm going to go with you because it wants me to re. So, okay, you can directly go to the to the next slide. And thank you for the introduction. By the way, you're seeing this gorgeous background. I'm actually in the countryside. That's why I'm today not wearing my tiara. I'm basically an incognito. Uh, I'm an incognito empress today. Uh, and basically what I want to talk about is um, how can you take your customer conversations to the next level? Because of course you could Klaus for, for, use Klaus for that and I'm going to really recommend that you use Klaus for that, but you don't have to use Klaus for that. You, can, you could attend, um, ex essentially also do this in a spreadsheet. So next slide. As they say, what gets measured gets managed. And that's what your agents will um, optimize for. So the usual contenders here are CSAT, first re response time, time to closure, etc. And these are all worthy goals. But if we believe any of the crystal balls out there, the real differentiator for customer support is outstanding quality in customer support. And one of the problems with CSET is that only a very small amount of customers actually answer your CSET questions. Many of you have probably also closed those CSET um, follow-up. Did you like the interaction with this agent? Um, emails that you get after each, each interaction. And very often these um, CSET answers 
actually have nothing to do with the agent themselves. Maybe that person just got their divorce notice in the morning or their cat died or like, anything else could have happened with them and they're suddenly super unhappy with the world and take this out on an, on an agent. So next slide. The question then is, what does quality actually mean? And if you want to go down a real rabbit hole, go into Google and search for the definition of quality because that is a very, very long discussion out there. So let's do what any college student would do. On the next slide, you're going to see what Wikipedia has to say on this. So quality is the non-inferiority or superiority of something. Mm -hmm. Okay. It means being suitable for its intended purpose while satisfying customer expectations. That's again, not really measurable. It's a perceptual, conditional and somewhat subjective attribute and may be understood differently by different people. Yay. And then we have consumer may focus on the specification quality, or they may not, of a product service or how it compares to competitors in the marketplace. Nice. This is what Wikipedia says us. It's like the most uh, concise way to put it together, but it doesn't really help us to understand what we should do about this. So next slide. Yeah. In other words, quality is what you deem, deem important to differentiate your service. And in our case, it's your customer service. So the differentiate, differentiation needs to be between what you offer and what your competitors offered. And this is, that is super personal. Next slide. For example, at Klaus, we pride ourselves on a very specific tone of voice. It's a little bit quirky. It's very personal. And more often than not, it's full of gifts and nice, cat pictures, because who doesn't like catch pictures? We are quick to answer chat and we give our agents the autonomy to take conversations from the beginning to the very end without frequent transfers between departments. Now, this works for Klaus. This would not work for an insurance company. They might put special emphasis on a rather formal tone of conversation and crystal clear communication with very clear text because they don't want to be liable for anything that they can't be liable for. Meanwhile, your local towing company probably doesn't care about any legal legalities or anything. They just want to get as quick as possible the information, where is the car that we have to tow so that they tow the right car and not your neighbor's car. And for e-commerce, the importance might be showing that you are a trustworthy party partner, that you exist, like the amount of Instagram messages, like uh, ads that are actually for companies that don't even exist is becoming by now actually a real problem. So they want to be in touch with someone and now this is a company that exists that I can trust and the product really exists and the pro product will get to me in a timely manner. And if there is a problem, I can actually reach out, reach out to somebody. And next slide. So basically quality depends on what your customer expect from you and what you are promising them. So click again, if you like formula. Quality is the combination between expectation and promises. The perceived quality is the result of your customer's expectation and your promises. Next click and the next one. The difference is like in another one. You own the promises. Like what you promise on your website is what you actually have to deliver. And you influence the expectations. Again, with your interactions, with the way you talk, with the way that you connect both on your own website, but also on the socials or anywhere else. So make it count. This is the part that you can influence. And the next slide. You don't need to read the text. <laughs> so uh, however you define the quality requirements depends then on you. For e-commerce companies, what I've seen very often um, is tone. And I think there's a next slide for this. Yeah, exactly. So the first one is tone or conflict management, because whenever money is involved, emotions can run really, really high. The second one is, for example, solution. Uh, click it, Chris. There you go. And the next one is uh, for solution, like it would be nice if the agent gives out the, the right solution and process adherence, like did adherence that the agent actually check whether the refund was should have been happening, for example. So yeah, now it goes to the next one. Um, if you're using, next slide, please, exactly. 
If you're using chatbots to direct customers to your knowledge base or to answer frequent questions like, where's my order? How can I get a refund, etc.?" Then you might want to use like finer or more granular metrics. Or if you are um, looking at the over, overall quality, you might start with like broader language. So circling back to the beginning, what get measured gets managed so that you can actually help your um, agents to optimize for whatever you want to, to, to measure and make this really count. Um, if you're not sure, you can always start with the very general question, was this answer adequate? Actually, I don't recommend to start with a scorecard. That's how we call the categories that you can um, rate your tickets on with 26 questions. Like if you want to answer 26 questions for every single interaction, like the reviewer will want to kill themselves after a very little time. So is was, was this answer adequate? If yes, fine. If no, what could this agent have done better or what could have we done better as a company to make it easier for this agent to actually uh, give the answer that would have been the correct answer? And um, we call these root causes because in the end, when things go wrong, there's always a very, there are very specific reasons that come up and up again. Like Chris just said that 33% of um, customers ask, where is my order? Like this would be a root cause. And the more you can actually dig down into what the root causes are for the problems that might be there in customer conversations, the better you can actually solve these. And once you are there, once you know what exactly you want uh, to solve, then it's time to look into the questions of what exceptional customer service looks for you um, and then work towards getting to that level. Thank you very much. And you can find out more about Klaus at Klaus app. We have lots of cat GIFs and a lot of cat, uh, um, cat uh, puns and cat images and all of them have, have word glasses. So. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thanks so much for that, Valentina. We just had Ren from Tushy give us a bunch of funny phrases and and uh, and catchphrases, and and now we had all the the great graphics with all the cats. So it's a, it's been a fun and and an eventful presentation. So a few questions for you before we let you off the hook. First one is is when you recommend tracking tracking specific quality categories for my new company, how specific should those categories be? Um, the if you create a demo account in Klaus there you will get three which is basically tone solution and was there a follow-up and this is if you don't know where to start start with these the the very best scorecard that i that, I, that i've ever seen was was this a fuck up yes or no and then mm -hmm. if it was then the reviewer <laughs> had to leave a comment if it wasn't then it's next so this is how you can start to look into it and then with time you'll realize oh maybe there are some things that we should go deeper into and then you can go granular what i do not recommend is going too granular because um in the end you want every reviewer to go through um, a significant amount of tickets and imagine you had to read customer conversation between agents and customers and for each single one you had to rate 36 different categories it's like by ticket yeah. three your brain is completely toast so keeping it simple um i usually recommend between two and seven and never more than seven categories and you will still get a very very granular granular way absolutely perfect uh all right um and then just to finish up you do have a special giveaway uh close is giving away a, a cocktail set and so yeah, we exactly. Do have the we have a cocktail set. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we do have uh, the winner for that, and it's uh, Eric D um, from Binnacle.com. So Eric, if you're with us, uh, we'll be reaching out to you afterwards uh, to get your shipping information. We'll send those off to you. So that's uh, that's courtesy of, of the Klaus team. And thanks again so much uh, for joining us, Valentina. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. Take care. All righty. We're, uh, we're happy to bring on the second last speaker of today's webinar. I'm going to be joined on stage by James from uh, the Thankful team. Hey, James, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. If you don't mind, I'll also take you up on the offer to share your screen just so that we can keep it rolling. No stress. How's the uh, weather in Los Angeles, James? Beautiful. It's always nice here. That's the reason. <laughs> I don't know why I asked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. Uh, uh, that, uh, is that all? Cool. I'm going to tee up uh, quickly, James, for an intro, and then I'll hand things over to you if that's cool. Yep. Awesome. All right, James. Uh, James Hodson. He is the VP of Partnerships with our friends at Thankful. 
his fun fact, uh, which is definitely very exciting to me, is that he raced the Ironman World Ironman World Championship in Hawaii, which is one of the most famous Ironman events in the planet. So congratulations on that, James. Um, when he's not doing Ironman training, he is passionate about helping build innovative companies that improve people's lives. He's currently the VP with Thankful, um, which is devoted to giving every customer access to great customer service. Um, by giving them the technology they need. So you're going to be learning all about that and maybe the Ironman stuff at the end. And with that, the floor is yours, James. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Um, and we're really excited to deepen the relationship with Gorgeous. Um, I have personally spent the last um, eight years building AI software specifically for e-commerce. And before that, I actually owned my own e-commerce business selling shoes via Shopify and did a lot of the customer service. So. Um, I know some of the major pains by having to do it myself. And today, Thankful works with some of the best brands on the internet for doing some of their AI customer service. So hopefully I can share with you a couple strategies and ways that you can take advantage of AI that really wasn't possible just a few years ago. Um, and so are you able to see my screen? Next slide. Perfect. Um, we are experts in AI, and I wanted to share with you the reason why we're building some of this um, customer uh, service AI solution. And a lot of it has to do with the themes that Daniel and Ren already spoke about, is that the expectation of the customer is growing. Brands like Amazon are setting the bar, and you really need to keep up. Um, but one perspective that I've seen a lot is that across your business, you really need to have high quality in all departments, which I don't think a lot uh, of focus on. So if you're doing well in e-com, you probably have you know, the Ferrari type product that you're already selling. Um, maybe you have the Tesla type marketing, but if you're rolling around in a 1997 Honda Accord for customer service, um, it's not a great experience for the brand. And so hopefully for those that aren't already on Gorgeous, you'd consider upgrading to that tool and then start to use some of the other benefits that AI technology can bring in, which would be you know lower costs, greater ability to scale. Um, and so you can sh see these stats, but everyone really kind of knows that feeling of bad customer service is really bad, bad bots, bad chat, bad AI is absolutely terrible. Um, but I'm excited to share some of the cool things that have changed uh, pretty recently. Um, next slide, Chris. So in the last year and a half or so natural language processing has progressed enough where machines can actually start to understand what humans are writing um, and so written intent is actually very huge because there are so many nuances in customer service and it's really tough to be able to understand the way different folks say different things um, so we can start to understand what the human is saying as good as a human can which is a really really kind of amazing thing and, and i don't get excited about many things in ai but um this was when i saw it in action is, is pretty amazing and so one of the the kind of key differentiators that thankful brings to the table and one of the ways we're helping gorgeous kind of be more innovative and more uh differentiated as a partner is that we've done deep learning that allows us to understand the intent of the customer um, and we can do that because we've gone the, the extra mile by taking advantage of an engine that is proprietary to Thankful. And then we've trained it on our dozens of, um, inter of dozens of brands that we work with over, you know, hundreds of thousands of interactions of track order, cancel order, where's my order, those kinds of things. And so we, we now support about the top 50 use cases for e-commerce, and then we can train it to learn any of the specifics of your business. But our network of existing clients has given you pretty much the, everything that you'd really need to get off the ground to really understand what your customers are needing and wanting. Um, and the very cool thing about Thankful is that the engine continues to learn and get better every day um, as we you know, resolve more conversations with your customers as our network continues to grow. Um, and you can see that 89 to 90% success rate they won't let me publish 99.9, .9, but we're getting, when we're you know reading, understanding, interacting with a customer, we're, we're getting maybe one in every thousand wrong, which I think is a very high bar, and we're, we're looking to push that bar pretty higher as well. Um, the second part that allows us to do this, and also an evolution of the last four or five years, which is, is really 
been helpful is that we've gone further than any other technology to make integration with your existing systems easier and simpler than before. So, you know, maybe it was tough to connect your data in your order management system or your tracking system or your 3PL or legacy warehouse software. We've built integrations to all those so we can bring all that data in one, one place and we can take action within those systems. So now we're actually canceling orders and updating subscriptions. Whereas before, you know, when I was doing customer service myself, literally someone goes, where's my shoes? I'm looking in FedEx, where's the tracking link? I'm looking in Shopify, did the order ship yet? Bringing those together and crafting a message. AI is actually able to do that all very quickly. And we have some public stats that we're saving human agents about six minutes per interaction which is pretty amazing. And it allows those human agents on your team to have deeper conversations, have more empathy. Um, a lot, a lot of um, you know, higher quality work goes into that. Um, next slide, please, Chris. And so um, the important part for us is that we can do this across every written channel. And so I think Chris is talking about some very cool things um, on Instagram coming. Um, right now we are SMS, chat, email, um, some very cool stuff with WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger. Um, it's really key to provide great customer experience across all of these. And then everything that we do is tailorable. So you maintain your brand voice, you can train the AI to, to you know, say the exact message that you want. Um, next slide, please, Chris. And then I wanted to make it very clear that we're not, you know, an all or nothing. I think a lot of people get very intimidated by AI. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger had did the Terminator movie and somehow that gets linked to us, what we're doing here with, with AI software. Um, but we can do many different things with the amount of data we're ingesting and helping. And so triaging tickets is huge. Being able to route uh, incoming message to the appropriate team member is really, really big. And as your brand scales, maybe you have a team for VIPs or you have a team for uh, customers in one part of the world that's speaking a different language. We can actually triage and route those um, tickets to the appropriate places. Um, the second thing is, and one way we can st start to save time for your agents is we can provide agent assistance. So if someone writes in, where's my order? but they didn't give you a unique identifier like an email address or shipping or uh, order ID or anything else, we can actually gather that inf information for the customer service agent. Or maybe they wrote in in Spanish and you only have agents that can read English. We can actually translate to many different, um, many different languages, which is very helpful for human agents, especially maybe you have a human uh, agent team in, in France, but you're mostly US based. So we see that a lot. Um, what we're most well known for is to be able to fully resolve a ticket. And we're seeing that right now that we can capture and fully resolve about 30 to 40% of ticket volume. And I think that aligns nicely with the stat we heard earlier that 33% are where's my order. Those are typically the easy, tedious ones to solve. Um, we can answer 30 to 40% of those tickets so that your human agents are freed up so that you don't have to scale your CX team you know, during holiday by as much as you had to last year. Um, and then finally, we are providing some new business intelligence. You know, I saw in the chat and the polls uh, and the questions, excuse me, that people wanted to know, you know, what stats are interesting. Um, CSAT is kind of the legacy uh, stat in customer service. We can start to look at other metrics and show you trends of customer service so you can see if Wismo is trending up or down, so you can actually get visibility into the operations of your business. So it's a much richer experience um, with, with some of the things we do. And then uh, next slide, Chris. And then just to bring everything kind of all back together, um, you know, with, with our solution in combination with Gorgeous, we act as an AI agent right alongside the human agents. So you're still able to get all of those requests that you're getting every single day out the door. We're able to integrate it with your existing systems and have a deeper understanding of all of your customers um, because you're getting that richer data that typically most brands don't have before. So we're doing this with you know a, a phenomenal set of brands and, and growing every day, and it's a fairly new technology. And there's no doubt in my mind that you know more artificial intelligence in customer service is the future um, you know, from what we're seeing. So that's what I have for you guys today. Um, if you'd like to learn any more, you can find me at james at thankful.ai. 
happy to walk through anything with anyone, um, but happy to answer any questions right now. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much for that, James. That was a great presentation. Definitely the AI piece is, is, is the future. We, you know, brands are just going to be having too much support volume. You can't possibly manage it, you know, one to one with everybody. So you definitely need that level of automation to help you along the way. And thankful is definitely a powerful tool for that. We have one question for you before we let you off the hook. And that is, I'm sure you get this a lot, but what, what information is accessible for someone to see on the thankful dashboard? What are some of the bigger ones that brands could expect to see if they were to start using thankful? Yeah. The, so the, things that I like from our analytics are you can see the overall number of tickets you received, uh, the number of tickets that we transferred or handed off to a, a human, and the number of tickets that we resolved. And you can see that on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. um, you can dive into that. And as I mentioned, we have about 50 of the top actions categorized. So you can go in and you can see of those orders, how many did thankful classify as a track order or an exchange order or a return order or a missing package and so on. So you can see the number of each of those volumes, the number of resolved and the number of transferred for each of those um, analytics as well. So it's some really powerful data. What I love is some of our trends, which is requiring a, a little bit more of a, a deeper conversation, but it can really show over time are customers, you know, writing in at a higher frequency about where is my order or can I, you know, exchange an item or how do I exchange? So you can start to see gaps in your operations of the business um, and where you can tighten things up, which I think is very, very powerful long term as, as any business that's growing or scaling. Absolutely. And that's even more powerful once you start to have years worth of historical data. Imagine last year you got tanked in BFCM because you didn't have enough support in place. Now, all of a sudden, going into the next BFCM, you can look back uh, in Thankful's dashboard to a year prior and, and kind of yep. get your ducks in a row. So that's great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, James, for joining us and representing Thankful. Uh, good luck on your next Ironman adventure, wherever that might be. And uh, enjoy that sunny California weather. Thank you. And we do have a giveaway. Uh, oh, right. Sorry. Apologies. So because we are all on Zoom all the time, I thought it'd be good to offer up a pair of blue light blockers from Blenders. Right. Um, and so hopefully that will protect some people's eyes. And uh, I found them super useful after we're all spending six or seven hours on Zoom. So Chris, if you want to pick someone, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah, yes, apologies for that. That's a great gift. Yeah, hopefully I was the winner of that one. But uh, <laughs> all right, let's see what we got here. <laughs> all right, we have Brett uh, Finlater or Finlater. Um, so Brett, uh, if you're with us, um, congratulations. You get yourself a fancy pair of, uh, of sunglasses that are going to protect your eyes from that screen that you're probably spending too much time on. So we'll reach out to you afterwards to, to get those shipped over to you. Awesome. Uh, thanks for giving that away, James. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Hey, take care, my friend. All right. Last, certainly not least, uh, we're happy to introduce uh, Shree from LateShipment.com. Welcome to the stage. How are you, my friend? Oh, I can't hear you. Apologies for no, that. I... Uh, great. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Um, great to be here. Um, and thank you for the introduction. Awesome. All right. I'll let you uh, get your screen up and running um, if you'd like. And I can give you the introduction. Or I can I can control the screen if you'd like. Just give me a moment. Uh, I think it should be good. Awesome. Cool. I'll give you a quick intro. Um, so Shri is the CEO and co-founder of LateShipment.com. His fun fact is he can speak five languages, but still often finds himself lost for words, which I think is pretty great. And yeah, LateShipment.com is a retail post-purchase technology company. He is an engineer at heart uh, and strives to help businesses create memorable order delivery experiences. And he's going to be talking today about how LateShipment.com achieves just that. And with that, the floor is yours. Woman, thanks. Thanks so much for that, Chris. Um, so I'm just going to uh, go to the presentation view. Um, so for, for a long time, I was assuming Chris was saving uh, the best for the last, right? But then later, as we went through the presentation, started realizing it's probably because he wanted to set the bar so high. That's how good the other sessions have been. Um, <laughs> so let me try living up to <laughs> living up to the standards that everybody else has set here. Right. Uh, so with that being said, um, again, uh, with LateShipment.com, uh, more than me as a presenter, me is uh, speaking about what we are covering today with regards to post-purchase. I'm privileged to have had the experience of working with thousands of other brands, which do what they do on the post-purchase side, um, especially with an eye towards like, creating these stellar purchase experiences. 
And I'm just going to act as a medium for uh, bringing to the floor a bunch of um, really cool lessons, really cool insights that we've managed to learn from these customers in terms of um, how to really set the bar high for customer experience as a whole. And um, we are specifically going to be talking about the post-purchase experience, um, more so because um, we that's not the first thing that strikes customers when or strikes brands, per se, when it comes to talking about the entire purchase experience. But then when you think about it, um, if we were to think of 2020 as a meme, uh, again, this was going to be my big reveal, right? But then uh, Chris went through this in the very first slide. So um, uh, like we are going to talk about this again. But then no better person to hear about this than from Chris himself, um, representing Gargis. Um, greater than 30% of customer inquiries in uh, 2020, and not just in 2020, even if you go back, like say, 2019 or 2018, we're basically um, shipping and delivery related. So if you go through the list of tickets that your uh, help desk has and categorize them into um, different categories, uh, which area, what type of questions the customer wanted answered, uh, more than 30% of them are squarely going to be questions purely about um, people asking uh, questions about their order while it's in transit. And more importantly, close to 23% of questions were simply the question which, which asked, hey, where's my order? Why is it not here yet? Um, so Again, if you look at the meme, it's uh, the question as such is is not only something very very frustrating for customers, uh, only when they don't have access to that information, desperate to know the status of something that is currently en route to them, do they ask that question, right? Because it it takes time out of their time and effort out of their day to come in, uh, talk to a support agent, or type start typing out an email asking that specific question, and it's a dangerous question too because um, the sheer volume of it um, and the person on the other end already being slightly angry or frustrated um, has really big repercussions for your brand, right? Um, so let's talk about maybe, um, we did speak about this quite a bit earlier, that this question was quite common, right? So let's maybe talk about a minute or so, uh, trying to find out why this question even happens. Um, so when you think about your entire purchase experience, I'm sure it starts at with the very first email that was sent out to your customers, Every click on your website is tremendously optimized. You're analyzing customer behavior. You're trying to uh, be proactive, uh, trying to give them the perfect choices, et cetera, et cetera, on your website, right up to the checkout button. Um, and even past that out in your warehouse, right? Trying to make sure an order that was placed that day is delivered or sent out of your warehouse that very same day, right? Like maybe even 2 p.m. Somebody places an order, it goes out uh, by 5 p.m. that day. Right? That those are the standards you set for your customers when they're on your website or when the order is completely within your control. But then, when you're in e-commerce, right, um, the point your order leaves the warehouse um, on en route to customers, that's really not the point when your order is completely done. Um, internally, you're probably marking these orders as complete, um, just because that order is left your control is in the hands of a shipping carrier, um, but. When you think about it, not even 50% of these of that order's entire journey is done at that point, right? You still have two or three days that order is going to spend in transit to a customer. And um, when you think about those two or three days when the order is not within your control, maybe in the hands of a shipping carrier, there are tons of things that could potentially go wrong and routinely happens. Um, again, if you believe this is not quite an issue, um, like the post-purchase gap that exists where you don't really know what's happening with an order while it's in transit. The easiest way to figure out is to maybe ask yourself or go ask your customer support team when they learn about an issue that is happening with an order when it's in transit to a customer, right? The most common answer to this, I mean, we talk to hundreds of customers, prospective customers um, every single month. And the most common answer that we receive to this question after like a lot of introspection is that, hey, we only learn about a post-purchase issue, uh, a delay or a lost package or uh, something potentially going wrong with the shipment only when a customer calls in to complain. And uh, put yourself in that customer's shoes, right? Uh, you're already frustrated about something not going right. And the first time somebody inside that business you place your faith in learns about that issue is when you call and complain about it. It's already too late to solve the problem. In fact, as a customer, you're probably very upset, angry. Maybe it was time sensitive. Maybe that order was very, very important. And there is very little the brand can do to recover from that experience the customer just faced. And again, if you assume this is a very, very rare issue, not many orders 
have issues in the post purchase phase think again again the data for this is easily verifiable by just going back to your uh, shipping delivery estimates and figuring out whether the deliveries did happen on time or um, number of complaints you received about uh, packages lost or damaged etc cetera, etc cetera. you would figure out quite quickly that the stats they show here are quite common across the board, right? Um, in a good year, I'm not even talking about 2020, where delays and issues with shipments were through the roof. You probably had that reflected in the tickets you were dealing with. But even in a regular year, 2018, 2019, the average issues that you deal with with an order in transit is about 10% of shipments having some sort of issue or the other, right? That's one in every 10 orders, not, being, um, not having the perfect experience, perfect delivery experience with customers. And um, if you believe, even with those high clearing numbers, um, your brand may be insulated from the fallout of that experience. Can you have to think again, probably look internally uh, about the metrics that uh, probably lie somewhere within your help desk or within your um, uh, uh, repeat purchase rates, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, the studies here clearly say one in three customers will not be shopping from you again after just one bad delivery experience, right? Um, we, Daniel spoke about this quite a bit in the first part of his presentation. Uh, the patience levels of customers are going down. Um, the number of chances, the number of opportunities that they provide to a brand get their act together is one or maybe even lesser than that after after reading just one bad review online they may never choose a shop from you so when a first customer has placed their faith and actually purchased something from you living up to the expectations that that uh, you set for the customer is imperative and the moment you fail to live up to those expectations one in three customers you're not going to see them again especially on the post purchase site after just one bad delivery experience the average customer satisfaction ratings um of customer uh, who did face a bad delivery experience in an order that was not addressed in time or addressed proactively is 40 percent and if you're doing um, um uh, that translates to about a four on ten in terms of um whether customers would recommend you to others etc and that is a very very poor score and customers hold you accountable for any problems that happen on the post purchase site not your um, shipping carrier and the ratings and the uh, numbers you see there with drop customers squarely speaks to that reality so that brings me a question i mean we've, we've spoken about the problem enough uh, now that uh, we've kind of established hey post purchase is an issue for my business not just for your business for any business out there um, let's talk about what a business can do to stay ahead of the curve um, actually um, the good news is that uh, not much just getting the basics right probably puts you way ahead of the curve just because of the issue i spoke about earlier right like not many businesses are paying attention to post purchase so just putting in that little bit of extra effort in getting your act together here probably means a world of different for your customers um what i mean by getting basics right over communication and hyper engagement and i don't mean this in a negative connotation um, just making sure communication to the customer extends beyond just that one order confirmation email. Uh, most businesses, the only communication that goes out to a customer after the purchase is complete is a shipping confirmation which says, hey, here's your tracking number. And they don't hear anything back from that brand except for maybe a feedback after like a week or so post delivery, right? That's almost like a week, week and a half where the brand uh, is not communicating with the customer about the status of a shipment that they're really expecting, right? Uh, the numbers here uh, speak otherwise, because every email that you send about an order that's currently in transit have an open rate of upwards of 70%, right? This is greater than even um, the best email that your marketing team probably sends. And this means customers really are looking forward to that information and are really reading the emails that delivers the information to them. And with um, communication comes the opportunity to engage too, right? Your emails, now that you know they're being read quite extensively, need not just stop with an update, right? Um, let's take, for instance, um, an uh, email which tells customers that their order is not going to maybe reach them on time. Bunch of customers over the uh, 2020 Black Friday, Cyber Monday uh, season went ahead and did this small tweak. Um, an incredible number of their shipments were being delayed, more than 30, 35% across the country. All they did was added a coupon as compensation for that delay and tried informing customers proactively about that delay happening with an order in transit. And the usage rates on those coupons were upwards of 30%, right? So rather than just using that email as a communication avenue, they managed to improve engagement with that customer during the post-purchase phase. 
And the third would be proactive issue resolution. What I just spoke about a little while back, if you are learning about customer issues in the post-purchase phase about delays, um, delivery errors, et cetera, only after the customer calls in and complains, it's too late. So figure out ways where you can keep track of shipments in transit and identify things that are potentially going wrong with them. And rather than waiting for the customer to call in about those issues, have your support team proactively reach out and try setting things right for the customer. You still have time because the issue has not manifested as a problem that affects the customer yet. So anything that you do to resolve it here is not going to have customer follow that up. And if you get this right, uh, the results are here for the world to see. The average CSAT score for an order uh, where proactive reach out and issue resolution and engagement happened is 85%. And this is usually higher than even um, CSAT scores for orders where no issue was observed at all. Right? We were truly surprised by these results too. But then we later realized customers value being valued. Um, they are rating these uh, interventions with issues higher than um, things with no issues at all because they value that experience. They value the fact that the brand is looking out for them, being empathetic, more than even the issue that transpired at that point. Again, if you need even more reasons for doubling down on post-purchase, um, it's, it's quite easy to pick up on this data too. E-commerce sales grew more than 30% in 2020, and that's uh, more growth than what... Um, the world over we estimated to happen in maybe like a three year or five year period. All that growth was condensed in an eight or 12 month period. Um, two to three day shipping is the norm. I would say it's it's um, growing to be even shorter than that. People getting impatient. Amazon's really spoiled people uh, uh, with an overnight or one day or a two day delivery, right? So that's how much customers are willing to wait for something to reach them. And um, Again, standing out for with a great post-purchase experiences, especially now when the space is not that crowded yet, when the bar is still uh, considerably lower in terms of what post-purchase experience a customer can expect from your from a standard brand is still low. Um, being able to stand out from everybody else in getting your post-purchase right probably means a huge competitive advantage, especially in um, in the face of uh, the transforming e-commerce landscape where almost every purchase is moving online now. Even people who are reluctant to maybe make the switch online or people who are holding out on their pick ticket, more important purchases um, from making them online rather than uh, that walking in store to purchase it, those are also moving online, right? So with those comes really, really high expectations of post-purchase customer experience. They got, people are gonna want the replication of that in-store experience, that personalization with an e-commerce purchase. The quicker brands are able to replicate that, they're going to be rewarded more with um, loyalty and repeat purchases, right? Um, the foundation of trust and reliability um, of, of being able to uh, believe in that brand, not just for the quality of the products, but then the experience as a whole is going to stand true to helping you win more customers and continue to grow out into the future. One more thing though, uh, something that uh, I know it's it's maybe slightly disconnected from the rest of the presentation, but then something that solely sticks out in many, many customers that we work with, right? When we speak so, uh, solely about the post-purchase experience is that uh, I spoke about that single order confirmation email or the shipping confirmation email, which has a tracking number attached to it. Um, number one um, depressing factor there, as far as the customer experience is concerned, is that most such tracking uh, number links lead to a standard carrier's tracking pitch. Um, the number here suggests um, on an average six to eight clicks per tracking number when an order is in transit to customers, right? Uh, now imagine the amount of money and effort you're investing into getting a customer to click through to your website when you're expecting to purchase something from you. Now, after that purchase is complete, while an order is in transit, any average customer is going to give you six to eight clicks uh, trying to know more information about the product he just purchased from you. And if you're donating these clicks away to a shipping carrier, it means you're compromising on the experience that the customer has. In fact, one in four customers, if you are directing them to a web page on your own website, where you're showing them brand consistent, uh, clearly laid out, uh, colorful, playful information that reflects your brand identity, one in four customers is going to click through from that page and go on, to the back, go on back to your website to maybe browse through more products, right? Maybe complete an additional purchase. Um, in fact, having your own tracking page, having um, Amazon does that. Most of the bigger brands you see have tracking on your own on their own website, right? The biggest reason for that is when you are inviting more people to your own website, um, having them play around, giving them information on 
on there, there is a very good chance that eight, 10 percent of them are going to go back and order something more to that order that they just made. Right. At the very least, you're going to provide brand consistent information to them, maybe supplementary information to the product they just purchased. And at the end of the day, their experience is going to be better off for it. Right. You still have them within your ecosystem and you're able to engage them more um, rather than donating those clicks away to a shipping carrier's website. Well, let me try leaving you behind with three really quick takeaways. Um, even if um, we covered a lot of ground during the rest of the presentation, just these three things, starting to do them right within your business is probably going to hold you in very good stead um, out in the future. Uh, one would be definitely keeping customers in the loop. Um, again, if your um, engagement after the purchase is complete, stops with the shipping confirmation email, definitely look beyond that. Customers love staying in touch with the brand or customers love brands that stay in touch with them in the post-purchase. Uh, lend your personality to these notifications. Make sure uh, customers are always in the loop, whether it's good news, bad news. Make sure it's delivered um, in, in your tone, in your language, with your own remedies for it, right? rather than letting the customer find out issues or updates by surprise. And second would be, um, Definitely, definitely make your support team and people inside your business be the first to learn about a potential issue as it's unfolding. It's not fair. It's not um, really uh, uh, pleasant for the customer to have him be the first person to learn about something going wrong. Uh, when a customer clicks the buy button, um, it's it, the buy button doesn't just represent a financial transaction there. Uh, it's the customer placing this her, her faith in your brand, right? So that means they are um, uh, expecting you to look out for their experience, even when an order is left to your warehouse. They did not pay the shipping carrier for that purchase; they paid the brand. So the responsibility still squarely lies on your shoulders. So make sure your customers team is equipped to be the first to learn about an issue with a shipment while it's in transit and empower them to be able to act on that and solve problems for customers before they mushroom into larger issues that affect the customer. And third, grab every single opportunity that you have to engage with a customer while an order is in transit, right? The customer at that point psychologically is in a very, very happy frame of mind. He's just purchased something, he's very happy about his purchase, he's looking forward to, he's expecting it, he has a very high opinion of that brand. So take every opportunity, to take every engagement to um, really make him feel even more excited about the purchase, right? Maybe you earn even more revenue from it. Uh, think about everything from the way the product is packaged, um, how you communicate with him while it's in transit, the unboxing experience, all the way through. Uh, because the customer, even though his purchase is complete, his product is not in his hands yet. And there are quite a few things that could go wrong. And every such opportunity that presents itself to engage with that customer is going to make things better off for him. It's going to add additional revenue and additional loyalty. So that brings me to the end. Um, you know, we covered a lot of ground. Um, I do leave my direct email address here. And if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. I would be glad to answer them here too. And one more thing, I know uh, Chris not covered it in his first slide. Uh, we are doing a giveaway too. Um, in fact, we're going to make it easy. In fact, we didn't want to make that choice, so we're going to let customers, uh, or we're going to let the winner make that choice for himself or herself. We're going to do an Amazon gift card, and if Chris can make a choice of who it has to go out to, uh, we will be glad to connect with them. Absolutely, that's the easy part. Here we go. Alrighty, we have Eric Pakravan from. Uh, 10110 Ventures. Eric, uh, congratulations. You're the Amazon gift card winner from Late Shipment. So thanks so much for that. Cool. And uh, before we let you off the hook, we have a few questions here. So first of all, uh, we posted your poll about when do merchants learn about a delivery error issue. 90% uh, of people said after a customer calls to report it. So I think after listening to your presentation, they're going to start thinking more about maybe that should be before a customer calls about it. And Late Shipment definitely makes it easy to do that. Um, so that, yeah, the one question we had for you is you said that almost every business faces these problems that you outlined now, why do you think they haven't been addressed until now? What, what, why is that? So it's, um, to satisfactorily answer that, right? Let's, let's maybe look a little uh, bit back into the history of e-commerce itself. Um, so a lot of the uh, best practices that we have adopted on e-commerce comes from, uh, like, uh, 
in store retail, right? Um, but um, again, uh, the way you structure communication, where you um, like treat a customer when they're in store, what experience do they provide when a sale is happening, etc. But then one unique thing about e-commerce was the fact that there is always that separation between when an order gets shipped out to the point when the order is received. So. Um, it's quite new. We've maybe had that for like the last 15 years, 20 years when e-commerce started picking up. So we did not really have a template or a playbook for that phase yet, right? Um, so the very first thing that uh, brands started doing when they were removed from their customer, had to ship a product out, was to rely on the shipping carrier to get their app, right? But then when you think about it, the objectives of the shipping carrier, which is to carry as many shipments as possible, make sure they get paid for actually delivering that shipment, is quite different from the brand, which is looking out for the customer, making sure that delivery is of the highest quality possible. So when there is a mismatch exactly. and no definite game, uh, playbook, which has existed for like decades or hundreds of years, as far as like regular retail is concerned, you're in a situation where that playbook has to be invented still. Right? But then the good news is uh, because um, like this battle for speed, as far as e-commerce is concerned, has already been fought and won. Right? Like nobody waits for longer than two days. Now we are on to the battle for experience. So uh, that playbook is probably going to be written very, very soon and in a very comprehensive fashion. The brands that are ahead of the curve are probably going to be the brands that write that playbook. And now is the opportunity to do so. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's a perfect place to end. And so yeah, I just want to invite the other speakers who are still with us uh, on the stage. Just want to thank you all uh, one more time for taking busy time out of your busy schedule to join us and, and lay some great tips and tricks for the brands that joined us today. Thank you all to everybody who did tune in. I know it's a busy Monday. It's hard to find time, but we definitely appreciate it. We want to keep doing these webinars to, to help you out. And so feel free to share feedback with us. Thanks again to everybody, our speakers and our visitors. And we'll be contacting everybody who is a winner of the lucky prizes to, to get those shipped out to you. So thanks again, everybody. Thanks, Chris. All right. See you, everybody.